Namaste, one and all. Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. Hope you lot are doing well and staying in, cleaning, washing your hands, going for your one permitted run, trying to beat that personal best of whatever you run a 5k in and all the other generic isolation uh, social distancing ting. Today I want to do something a little bit different. I want to stop talking about the news and the deals behind the scenes and the transfer speculation just for a day and I want to talk about when football comes back, looking at when football just stopped and where Chelsea Football Club were actually going and how they were performing because lest we forget the last two games played by Chelsea, Frank Lampard's Blues, was actually really good. Chelsea 6, Merseyside nil. The Everton and Liverpool wins. And also, a really important thing to take into account was the catalyst for these two wins, the man of the match performer for these two wins, was none other than young Scottish international Billy Gilmore. In a time where silly season is kind of still going on with transfers and stuff, I really didn't want this situation to be swept under the rug because Chelsea looked really, really good and it was largely to do with Gilmore being in the middle of the pitch. And when there's times of talks of new players, you know, whether that's midfielders, defenders or attackers, Chelsea really need to evaluate what they had going well and how to nurture that going forward. Gilmore's an 18 year old lad who looks absolute flames. He's not a 30 year old who came back into the side and helped the team out and looked good. Actually, kind of like all of Chelsea's front three, all in their 30s, came back in towards the end of the season, looked all right. Gilmore is different gravy, mate. And I want to talk about how next season, when football finally starts again, one day, why he's going to be an incredibly important figure and why us as Chelsea fans should not forget that and really rejoice and bask in the glory of the young Scotsman. And he is little, isn't he? So we're going to be talking about his play style, what he brings, who suffers in place of him, etc. A quick reminder to you lot who watch my videos and indeed hopefully enjoy my videos to please do subscribe if you've not already done so. A lot of people come back and watch this content, you know, man. And about 50, even 60% aren't subscribed. I've checked the metrics. I've checked the analytics. You there, if you haven't subbed, please do just click the little button. Don't know, it does it. Right, oh, let's get on with it. So, I'm sure you do remember against Liverpool in the cup where Chelsea eliminated Jurgen Klopp's pretty much first team by the end of it. Who won man of the match? None other than young Billy Gilmore. He was magnificent. He had Fabinho on toast. He sent him to the shops. He sent him all over the gaff, really. Though slight and petite in frame, he is he imposes himself. Well, it's like the kids from Glasgow, do you know what I mean? He's not going to be a pushover. Even if lightweight, he gets stuck in. He puts a tackle in. He holds the ball up really oddly because he's so small. But he gets the ball out of his feet really, really quickly, generally. Dictates play, moves forward, makes key passes, carries the ball further up the pitch into the final third, and also can play in one of those advanced eight roles as well, which of course he did against Everton. It's kind of like the all-round midfielder. I mean, maybe not goal scoring. He has actually scored some goals for the Premier League too this season. Check out his transfer marked profile graphic next to me now. As you can see, a couple of goals, a few assists, etc. Not bad. He's a versatile midfielder that can play in pretty much all midfield roles. But come the game against Everton in the Premier League, Ancelotti's return to the bridge emotional moment. A very good Ancelotti's Everton as well. They've been playing very, very well ever since he's come in. Dominic Calvert-Lewin had exploded in the front line next to Richarlison. Chelsea put on a masterclass show. Of course, Everton weren't at their best, far from it, and that afforded Chelsea to play well. But once again, Billy Gilmore won man of the match. Like previously stated, he started in the deeper role, but he also played in a more advanced role before the end. But really, he seems to be doing his best work in that deep role. Now, Billy Gilmore's played a I say a lot, a few minutes in that role already this season. I've seen him at the bridge a couple of times live playing in that deep role and he is magnificent. People initially were saying, wow, he's like Cesc Fabregas, you know, he looks a lot like with his passes and the way he gets his head up really quickly. He actually said he idolizes his game a lot on Fabregas and in the Esther. So we were thinking, wow, this kid's a really sort of like good quarterback. But the truth is, man, he's not just a good quarterback. He's quite good defensively. In a weird, peculiar world, I trust this tiny little Scottish kid more 
as a DM than a seasoned international winner like Cesc Fabregas, who's older. It's so peculiar, I was saying this at the time, to have this kid in the DM position to feel safer with him there than anyone else. When you started a game, you actually felt like, come on, Chelsea are going to win this. We've got tiny little Billy Gilmore at the base of a pivot by himself against a massive, strong, fast Premier League team. It literally felt like that. So, once again, Billy Gilmore wins Man of the Match. Two consecutive games, two competitions, two clean sheets, two comprehensive wins with loads of play that he's dictating and scoring goals. Not he's scoring goals, he's dictating the play which leads to goals being scored and Chelsea look excellent again. Everyone was talking about Billy Gilmore those days, few days, weeks, weeks, a week or whatever it was. Point being, he was the talk of the town and shouldn't be forgotten. Frank Lampard has a genuine headache problem here moving forwards because say football did start up again and say everyone was fit, you know, if you were playing like football manager and looking at the results, you'd be like, hmm, yeah, I'm gonna play him over Jorginho because I have to. Jorginho's been an incredibly good professional and a good player for Chelsea over the last couple of seasons, but in terms how, of how Billy Gilmore shifted the dynamic of the entire team, and Frank Lampard himself praised him for that, getting his head up, releasing the ball quickly, getting his foot in, all this stuff that, well, some of the stuff that Jorginho can't really do. Jorginho's very slow in the tackle, that's why he picked up so many red, yellow cards this season, because he can't really make a clean, quick enough tackle. Billy Gilmore can. And by the way, everyone, I like Jorginho. I'm a big fan of him. This is not some sort of agenda coming through. And you all know I love N'Golo Kante, but he's a sort of destructive uh, roaming midfielder who plays in a two. So he's not going to go back and play that lone pivot by himself. And in fact, we can talk about whether Chelsea should sell N'Golo Kante cash in now. That's just been a huge talking point against Chelsea fans and football media as well for a few months now. But I'm not going to get into that right now. If Frank Lampard truly does run a meritocracy and wants to be <laughs> pragmatic in many ways, he needs to play this teenager in the base of his midfield, flanked maybe on the left by Ruben Loftus-Cheek, and maybe Kovacic on the right? Already that sounds like an incredibly good midfield, doesn't it? And of course, Mason Mount came into form as well in the latter stages of the season when he was playing in the left centre mid role, not as a number 10, not as a left winger. He looked really good, he scored that amazing goal, he should have scored a couple of more worldies that he got very unlucky that they didn't go in. He looked, and he's obviously a very, very good pressing midfielder, which Frank Lampard finds very important. You know what? So is Billy Gilmore. They're both very good at pressing from the middle. So although I'm a Ruben Loftus-Cheek super fan, maybe if the season was to start immediately, you do look at Mason Mount in the left centre mid for the moment, Billy Gilmore in the base, and Mateo Kovacic, arguably Chelsea's player of the season, right centre mid. A formidable midfield. Chelsea have the likes of Ethan Ampadu coming back, hopefully, and although he hasn't played much football and would take some time to bed in, I think he'd be the more defensive of the two young options at that lone pivot role. Billy Gilmore and Ethan Ampadu. Think about it that way, Chelsea fans. The future of Chelsea's defensive midfield for the next 10 years plus? They're both so, so young. They could both genuinely play at Chelsea for 10 years if they stay fit and, and indeed want to play for Chelsea and perform. Two very different options. Uh, Billy Gilmore's more of a dictator, so can do a bit more of everything. Ethan Ampadu is a little bit more mean and can get stuck in, but he still absolutely has a long pass on him, kind of like a more sort of aggressive quarterback. But Billy Gilmore is the cultured Scottish Iniesta. He's changed the way Chelsea had played in the latter stage of the season, genuinely from back to front, and I mean that defensively as well. Changes the way the defence play, the midfield function, and indeed how the forwards go forward and attack. One little 18 year old Scottish boy has changed the way Chelsea plays. Um, this is not hyperbole. Look at the man of the matches and the results and the opposition as well. It speaks for itself. So it's going to be an interesting one if Chelsea buy new players, which you bet they will, and football will eventually return. Who's going to play where? What's going to happen? Are people going to forget about Billy Gilmore? I hope they don't. I hope when Frank Lampard does get the players together and starts doing analysis again, he'll review how Chelsea were playing in the latter stages and he'll be like, you know what, mate? You know what made us play like this? It was Billy Gilmorinho. Anyway, I'm keen to hear your thoughts and opinions on the young Scotsman. Do you believe or would you put him into the starting lineup if Chelsea were to play a game tomorrow or would you put 
Jorginho in there. Would you play a 3-4-3 three, three and play Kante in a midfield too? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything I've spoken about today. Quick reminder, please do subscribe if you're new. And if you want to donate to my NHS fundraiser, which ends in a few days, I'd really appreciate it if you do that. And you've also got the chance to win a Chelsea shirt. Click the link in the top of the description. Also follow me on Instagram because I'm going to be doing a live today at Football Yannick. That's it for me. You lot. Enjoy the football that's not happening and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby